Hi, just Duncan here. Uh, on this video, we are going to have a look at pedestrian crossings. Now, we should all know what a pedestrian crossing is. I'm sure we've all used them as pedestrians to cross the road safely. Um, so what we need to do is now just start to think about pedestrian crossings on a driver's point of view. We have several types of pedestrian crossings. So just quickly running through them with you, we have a uh, pelican crossing, a puffin crossing, a toucan crossing, an equestrian crossing, a uh, zebra crossing, and they're the main main five. All right. To be honest with you, it's not important that we remember all the names. It's just maybe understanding, okay, some of the differences, okay, between um, each of the, the different types of crossing. Um, a pelican crossing is a crossing that is controlled by traffic lights. Uh, the way I think of it is, it's actually a quite an old type of crossing or if you like old technology so what we have okay is when we approach that we'll have the green traffic light telling us that we can go then it will turn to amber to make us aware that the lights are then going to turn red and then from the red light it will go to a flashing amber and then back to green so this is the only pedestrian crossing okay where we're going to find we have the flashing amber so what the flashing amber light means, okay, which will come on after the red light, is if the pedestrian crossing is clear, there is no pedestrians on the crossing and they're all back on the pavement and the amber light is flashing, we can safely then start to drive through and go through that crossing. We don't need to wait for the traffic light to go green. Whereas all the other um, crossings, okay, control crossings, your puffin, your toucan, your equestrian crossing and that, they generally will have a normal traffic light sequence. So they'll go from green, amber to red, red amber together, and then back to green. Okay. Modern crossings like the puffin crossing, okay, is they have technology where they have sensors, okay, on the crossing that can detect pedestrian movement. So we'll generally, okay, hold the traffic light, okay, whilst there's pedestrian movement on the crossing. So for that reason, there isn't the need, okay, for the flashing amber light. So you're gonna find, okay, there, it's a normal traffic light sequence, okay, at those crossings. <clears throat> a zebra crossing is then an uncontrolled crossing. So what you have at a zebra crossing is the black and white pole. And on top of the black and white pole, you have the Belisha beacon, okay, the amber beacon that just blinks on, off, on, off all the time. So, Obviously, approaching a zebra crossing, then we need to obviously make sure that we are really aware and look for any pedestrians approaching or waiting to cross the road. So we can split our pedestrian crossings into two types to make life easier for us. We can think of them as controlled, i.e. they're controlled by traffic lights, or they're uncontrolled, all right, where we have got to make the decision. Now, whether they're controlled or uncontrolled, okay, we should be approaching the crossings, all of them in the same way. When we identify a crossing ahead, and we should be identify them in, in good time, the first thing we always want to do then is check our interior mirror, find out what's going on behind us. So if we need to take any action, i.e. we need to slow down or we need to stop, we're aware of traffic, okay, in the distance that the traffic's behind us, so we're not gonna cause a problem. Um, so always check your interior mirror. Even on controlled crossings, okay, where you've, you know, you've got the traffic lights there, all right, you should then, okay, be looking either side of the crossing, looking for pedestrians, okay, walking towards the crossing, waiting at the crossing, all right. If they're uh, controlled, you probably see pedestrians waiting there. They've already pressed the button to wait and anticipate the fact that the lights might change. And also anticipate the fact that those pedestrians might, even though you're on a green light, might step out all right so we need to be pay attention okay because people do do silly things at times so if we've got pedestrians there just be aware um uncontrolled okay your zebra crossing and again the same thing on approach checking your interior mirror and then start looking either side to see if you've got any one waiting um or approaching the crossing where you're going to need to slow down and stop now 
just so you understand, okay, is what the law says and what the highway code advises. When approaching a zebra crossing, the highway code advises if you've got pedestrians waiting to cross the road, then we should slow down and stop and allow them to cross. The law says, okay, if they've got one foot on the crossing, one foot actually on the road, then you must stop. You are committing an offence going through, okay, a zebra crossing if somebody has actually stepped onto it. We should be following what the highway code says anyway, all right? If um, we've got pedestrians waiting, we're going to slow down and we, we're going to stop, okay, and let them cross. We must make sure that the pedestrians have fully crossed the road before we then continue through. And that is also included, okay, with traffic lights. You know, just because the traffic light's gone green, if you've still got pedestrians on the road, wait, make sure they're on the pavement before you continue through. All right, pedestrians could suddenly turn round and go back in the direction they come from. So therefore, if you start to move through a pedestrian crossing as a pedestrian's on there and they suddenly change their mind and turn round and come back on themselves, then you're gonna be in all sorts of bother. So always make sure that, okay, pedestrians are back on the pavement before you go through. Okay, so on approach to these crossings, okay, what we'll see on approach and the other side of the crossing, what we'll see is white zigzag lines. Um, those white zigzag lines, okay, we're always going to identify that it's a pedestrian crossing. So if we see traffic lights and we've got the white zigzag lines on both sides, we know that those traffic lights are there solely for the reason of a pedestrian crossing. They're not there to control the junction or anything like that. Those traffic lights' sole purpose is for a pedestrian crossing. Things you okay, you'll be aware of, okay, within a zigzag line area then is you're not allowed to park okay on or partly on a zigzag line it is an offense and we're not allowed to overtake in a zigzag line area either reasons for no parking you're going to obstruct other road users visibility or pedestrians so you're causing danger all right and again it could be dangerous to try and overtake in that area because it's likely with an area that where pedestrians are crossing the road so what we're going to do is we're going to go for a bit of a drive, okay, and we're just going to obviously see some various crossings, okay. So what you're going to notice, okay, probably on the drive, that on approach, okay, to some of the crossings, whether they're controlled or uncontrolled, on approach to some of the crossings, we're going to have good visibility. So I'm still going to check my mirror as soon as I see one, and I'm going to start looking both sides. Now, if I've got good visibility and I can clearly see that there's nobody approaching, there's nobody anywhere near the pedestrian crossing, then I don't need to take any action. I can just continue, okay, through that crossing. Um, obviously, if there's pedestrians approaching or pedestrians in the vicinity, then obviously you're going to see me slow down and stop. You're also going to, we're going to come across some pedestrian crossings where visibility isn't so good. We're going to have parked cars near the crossing, hopefully not on the zigzag lines, you never know, but... Okay, still okay, cars parked up near the crossing. Now that sometimes can obscure our vision, okay, to what's going on on the pavement. So if I haven't got a clear view, okay, of the pavement, okay, around that pedestrian crossing, regardless of what traffic lights are saying or whatever, what I'm gonna do is check my mirror and I'm gonna slow down. It might be just, I'm just easing off my gas. I'm just going to slow down and be prepared. I'm not going to commit myself to go through that crossing until I can actually see it safe. Now, I've got something, if I have something really obscuring my vision, then I'm going to slow right down. I want to have a look both sides of that crossing, all right, um, before I commit to go through it. So there is occasions, okay, um, where a large lorry or something like that is really, really blocking the view. So it might mean, okay, we do need to use the brakes and slow down. So it's going to depend, okay, on what's happening and what we can see. Or, in other words, possibly, okay, what we can't see. So we need to take that action. So again, we're never going to endanger a pedestrian, okay, using a crossing. Okay, so hopefully that's some help. I'm going to put a bit of a drive together now then, okay, just to show you some, so you get some idea, okay, of exactly how we're dealing with, okay, these pedestrian crossings. Okay, so I'm going to drive down the road, and I'll give you a bit of a chat through as we're going along.
Okay, so I can already see right down this road that I have got a zebra crossing coming up. I know it's a zebra crossing because I can see the black and white pole um, and the Belisha beacons flashing. Now I've got a lot of parked cars on the left hand side here. All right, so I'm checking my interior mirror and I'm just easing off my gas a little bit because I can't clearly see to the left. I've got a pedestrian on it now, just come off. So I'm just easing off, the right side is clear and I can see the left side is clear so I can continue through. So you can see that I just eased off right down on that, okay? So I was able to see that left side properly before I committed myself. Okay, I've got another zebra crossing coming up. Looking clear on the right side, I can now just see the left side. Yep, it's nice and clear, so I can continue through. And I can see I've got another one coming up, okay? And then just after that, I've got a junction. So again, checking my interior mirror. The right side is looking clear. I've got a car moving out in front of me. But again, I can't clearly see the left side of the pavement because of the parked cars. I gotta slow down as well for the traffic lights that are on red just after the crossing. The crossing is clear and I'm gonna continue following the road ahead. So quite often as well, okay, where we have traffic lights, okay, at junctions, controlling a junction like we have in front of us, we're also likely okay to have areas for pedestrians to cross. So these pedestrians crossings are not here for the sole benefit of them crossing the road. The, these traffic lights are here actually, the main purpose of these traffic lights, okay, is to control the junction where we've got several roads coming together. But it also puts a safe place for pedestrians to be able to cross the road because the traffic lights are controlling traffic. You won't find white zigzag lines, okay, on these traffic lights, okay, controlling junctions, all right? As I said, the white zigzag lines, you'll only find them, okay, at traffic lights where the sole purpose is for the pedestrian crossing. So I've got a pedestrian crossing coming up now, checking my interior mirror. This is a controlled crossing, traffic lights. So we will see the zigzag lines on the road. I can see both sides clear, so I can continue through. So we know that those traffic lights, okay, sole purpose were for that pedestrian crossing. For the roundabout coming up, I'm gonna turn right at the roundabout. And I notice already into my new road that I'm turning into off this roundabout is there's a zebra crossing straight away. So I'm already aware of that before I've even entered the roundabout. So looking at both sides, Nice and clear, but again, even on the um, zebra crossing here, we can see we've got the white zigzag lines. Looking up the road, I can see traffic lights ahead. So I'm already aware of traffic lights, pedestrian area, shops, everything up here. So warning sign on the left of pedestrians crossing. So again, checking my mirror, Zigzag lines on these lights, we know it's a pedestrian crossing, and it's looking clear. And the guy there just pressing the button just as I kind of cross through. Zebra crossing coming up, mirror check. Very poor visibility here on both sides. So I'm just easing off my gas, checking it all the time. Particularly where we've got shops, okay, it's quite often okay where there's a shop there, they come running out of the shop and they just run across the road. Okay, so again, another zebra crossing coming up. So mirror check, again, visibility really quite poor. Traffic's moving slowly. So again, looking both sides, nothing on the right, one coming up on the left. So I'm slowing down and stopping. Now, though she's crossing in front of me, I am gonna wait until she's on the pavement and check that nobody else is gonna use the crossing before I go through. So you can see there, I didn't just go through once she got out of the front of me, I waited. Traffic control crossing here, which is changing. Lights are going on to amber, to red, slowing it down. Pedestrians on both sides. 
It's a good idea to use your handbrake as well when you stop. So again, the car's nice and secure. So if somebody gives you a bump from behind, it's not gonna push you forward. Flashing amber light here. Again, nothing on the crossing, so I was able to go through. So we know from that being a flashing amber light, okay, on that pedestrian crossing, it was a Pelican crossing. Okay, and at the end of the road, here I'm gonna be turning right. So again, these traffic lights ahead of me, okay, are primarily here to control the flow of traffic, okay? But I also just noticed, okay, on the right there, okay, you, you might be picking it up on the camera, we can see the red man on the traffic light to the right of us. So they've incorporated a pedestrian crossing, okay, within, okay, the traffic lights at this junction. So as I already said, okay, yeah, we need to be aware of pedestrians. We should be looking out for pedestrians in the same way. You won't find the white zigzag lines here. It'll be all double yellow lines, okay, around a junction like this. Um, because again, as I say, okay, the purpose of these traffic lights mainly is to control the flow of traffic at this junction. It just makes it a great area, a safe area for pedestrians to also be able to safely cross the road since the traffic is being controlled by traffic lights at this junction. traffic lights coming up okay there I don't know if you noticed there stayed behind there okay those vehicles are using that intersection incorrectly they kept themselves on the right hand side there where they should have moved themselves over onto the left Okay, so traffic lights here again, controlling traffic. But we can see here, we've got the boxes. There's also, we can see the, um, the little square dots going across the road, okay, where the pedestrians cross the road. We can see the boxes, the yellow boxes for where pedestrians press the button for, for the crossing. Uh, there is children, okay, pedestrians and that on the right hand side. This pedestrian crossing will be split into two because obviously the central reservation Okay, and there we've got them there waiting. But again, they won't get sole priority, okay, when they press the button on this one because they say, okay, this is here controlling traffic at the junction, not just um, as uh, a pedestrian crossing. I'm just coming up to the road, okay, further up ahead, because if I remember rightly, we have a Toucan crossing here. So this is where cyclists can also use and cycle across. So this is one crossing where cyclists are actually allowed to cycle across. They'll have a separate path. Warning sign on the left there, okay, showing cyclists. There's a cyclist just ridden across. Lights are on green, mirrors already checked. So we'll have two bits, a bit for pedestrians and a bit for cyclists. So we've got a cycle path, okay, running across the road there. So that's why, okay, and obviously you'll probably find, okay, on the pedestrian side of things, we'll have the red and green man for them and we'll have a red and green cycle um, as well, okay, for them. And we can see we're just coming up to another zebra crossing, which is just before the roundabout. Bus is blocking my view on the left. So again, mirror has been checked. Crossing is clear. Through I go to now negotiate the roundabout. And one leaving the roundabout. 
of help. So it is really important, okay, that you know when you're entering a new road and leaving a roundabout like we did there, we see we had pedestrian crossings very, very close to the roundabout. So again, this is why it's very important, okay, to have a good look into your new road before you enter it, because otherwise you can find yourself coming off a roundabout, okay, pretty quickly and all of a sudden okay you've got a pedestrian crossing on top of you and if a pedestrian then is using it you've now then got to do some harsh harsh braking so it is important okay to be watching and knowing what's up in that new road before we get there okay here we've got a warning sign of uh, patrol and you see that there we've got okay the amber lights so these are the crossings okay that are normally used during school times okay before and after school where we're likely to get a lollipop person. So, again, when you see those flashing amber lights, okay, on, then obviously the same thing really needs to apply. Um, check your mirror and keep an eye out because you're likely to get a lollipop lady, but obviously, again, children, okay, in the area where children are gonna be crossing the road, okay, obviously on the way or even leaving school. Okay, so we can see we've got more lights up ahead. Lights are on green, checking my mirror. Okay, and you can get any of those traffic lights. I'm still looking both ways, checking that left side. Nobody waiting. Because again, obviously, if people are waiting, you know that you know there's a, a reasonably good chance that those lights could actually change. And I'll do this one more with you because this one up here again is just another quick look at a Toucan crossing. Okay, so where we've got cyclists. So lights on, check mirror, lights are on green. Checking both sides. And we'll have two paths going through. You'll see the route, pedestrian one first now, cycle path across now. All right, so again, need to identify pedestrians and cyclists approaching and using, okay, those two can crossings. Again, as long as you're anticipating the lights and you're generally just, you know, aware and having a good look both sides, they're not really gonna cause you any problem at all. Okay, I think that's enough for the drive.